What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far today. Um, Getting into this episode of GH, listen, that damn Gladys. <laughs> I done had enough of Gladys' ass. I've had enough. I've had my fill of this heifer. She need to go. Like, I am so glad that Sasha brought this up. About the living situation. You know, her phone went off to remind her that she got to go looking for new apartments. Because she needs something bigger. Um, I think Sasha's living out of the Metro Court and stuff. So she need a bigger place, you know. And Brando sitting there talking about some, oh, maybe one day the three of us can move in together. And Sasha was like, when you say the three of us, you talking about the baby or your mama? <laughs> I'm glad she mentioned that shit because I'm like, which third one are you talking about? Are you talking about the child? Are you talking about your mammy? Which one? Because if it's your mama, it ain't going to happen. I would love for Sasha and Brando to give their relationship a real shot and be a family and be a couple and stuff like that. But as long as his mama around, it's not going to it's not gonna happen. It's just going to be a big ass problem. Um, And of course, you know, Brando had to step up and go get his mother from the, from the bar because she was at the bar antagonizing Carly acting a fool. Um, cause she gonna walk up to Carly and Laura and stuff asking Carly when's the big day when her and Jason are getting married so she could save it on her calendar. Carly was like, bitch, we ain't set no date, but when we do, don't worry about it cause your ass ain't invited. I said, I know that shit right, Carly, cause I wouldn't invite you either. I'm just saying. I wouldn't invite you either. Um, so Brando had to get her away from them and, you know, Brando, I guess, made the decision. He told Carly that he wasn't gonna join the organization. We'll see how long that lasts. Um, we'll see. Because I, I do have a feeling Brando at some point might change his mind. Especially if his mama got anything to say about it. Um, so they start talking and whatnot. And Gladys points out that Brando's place is not big enough for her to be staying there and the new baby and stuff. And Brando was like, yeah, it's not big enough for all of us. So that's why you got to move out. I was glad, honestly, I was happy that Brando stood up to his mother, you know, and let her know you need to pack your shit soon and get and get to stepping. And of course, in good old Gladys fashion, she started blaming Sasha. Oh, this was Sasha's idea. No, it was not her idea. Why would it be Sasha's idea? She don't live with Brando. It was not her idea. She's forever trying to blame Sasha for everything because she sees Sasha as competition. That's really what it is. She sees Sasha as trying to come between her and her son. And that's not what Sasha's trying to do at all. This was Brando's decision. He wants her gone. He wants her to move out. She need to go get her own place. Here goes. Here go fucking Gladys. Gladys said, how are you going to pay your rent and my rent? I said, what the fuck? <laughs> She must be smoking that Snoop Dogg marijuana. Who the fuck said they paying your rent too? Madam, ma'am, no ma'am. Nobody's paying your bills. Are you insane? Because you know what that means. If he got to pay her rent, that also means he has to pay her utilities. Hell to the no. In New York? Hell no. Hell to the no. Gladys, you smoking that good, good. I want to hit it with the fuck you smoke and what universe you live in. Because who's paying your rent? Brando was like, bitch, I'm not paying your rent. He was like, you're going to have to get a job. <laughs> I said, it's about damn time, Brando. Stand up to your mama. I'm just saying, like, she tripping, tripping. Ain't nobody about to pay your damn bills, woman. You must be crazy. That woman is nuts. Like, Gladys is crazy. She's sitting here talking about who's going to hire me. I don't know, Heifer, if you had some skills or something. How you been on this earth? How old is Gladys supposed to be? 60 or something? How old are you? You've been on this earth for decades and you ain't got no skill set. You ain't got no retirement fund, no 401k. You ain't got nothing. Social security. You ain't got nothing. What woman, what happened to all the money Sonny was paying her every month? Was she spend that on gambling or whatever? Like, what the hell you been doing? Because Sonny gave her a stack of money and he gave her a healthy amount of money every month for ever since Dev was to pretend to be her grandson. What have you been doing with that money? I would have been stacking that shit. I would have been stacking that money, paying my bills and stacking the rest. 
Like, what is you doing? She wants somebody to take care of her, and that's just a I, I, that's a no for me. Hell no. Mm, the gravy train is over, ma. You got to pack it up. Um, I was like, does she really? She was so surprised that Brando wanted her to move out. I'm like, woman, he's a grown man. What grown man want to stay with their mama forever? I mean, not only do people not want to live with their moms forever, hell, they don't want their mama living with them forever. Did she really think this was a forever kind of situation? Um, ma'am, he's a bachelor. He's a grown man. Now he's having a family of his own. You got to go. So, you know, Sasha, out of the kindness of her heart, she offered her a job as an administrative assistant. Here go Gladys. That sounds like tedious work to me. I'm like, Gladys, you don't have a job. You ain't got no savings. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got no life. You better take that job. Talking about tedious. Tedious, my ass. You need to check. <laughs> you better take it. And honestly, Sasha was a lot nicer than I would have been because you sitting here offering her a job. I wouldn't offer that with a handshake. I'm just saying. Like, be keep it 100. You wouldn't get a scoop of ice cream from me. I'm just saying, especially as bad as she act, you know, and Brando was actually happy with the way um Sasha handled it and stuff. And Gladys all happy, talking about, oh, let me go get ready for my new job. Woman, she is just going to be a pain in the ass. I hope Sasha ready because she's going to be a pain. I'm telling you. She's going to be a total pain. Anyway, moving on from that. It was good to see Laura and Carly, you know, talking and stuff and sharing some screen time. I still say, you know, for Laura's, you know, mayoral run, you know, I love me some Laura, but I mean, it ain't good to be, you know, mixing and mingle, mingling with the Corinthos folk. I'm just saying, I mean, yeah, they've been friends for a long time and stuff, but still, it's like you, you are the mayor and everybody know the Corinthos family ain't, you know, on the up and up. So, you know, for your image, you might want to pull back a little bit. I'm just saying. Um. Honestly, I love their conversation. You know, of course, Carly is still thinking about Sonny and stuff like that. I mean, when you've been spending over two decades with somebody, of course, that love doesn't go anywhere. They had a lot of their ups and downs and stuff. But of course, you know, she's still thinking about her her deceased husband. If only she knew. Uh, <laughs> and I have a feeling when she does find out about what's really been going on these last few months, something telling me she's going to bitch slap Nina from here to Bangkok. I'm telling you. I, I, I'm telling you, Carly going to be ready to whoop some ass. I already know it. But, you know, it's not surprising that her and Jason are making the moves that they're making. I mean, for business purposes and stuff like that. But everybody else think it's, you know, like y'all getting together because it was bound to happen. I'm like, mm, not really. I don't see it that way. But, you know, Laura made a good point. She was like, you know, Sonny would be happy that Jason is looking after her, which I agree he would be. But I have a feeling when Sonny come back, he's not going to be happy to find out that Jason and Carly are getting married or are married. Like, he's not going to be happy to find that out. Because I've been watching Sonny for a long time. And Sonny sees things, I could be wrong, but he sees things as betrayal. Stuff like this, he may see as a betrayal. I think after a second, once it's explained to him, will he understand it? Maybe. But he might still, you know how Sonny is with that little short man complex he got. He's like, no, this betrayal, this, you know how he do. He like to just be angry. So <laughs> you never know what reaction you're going to get out of him, honestly. I mean, I'm just keeping it 1,000. You just never know what you're going to get from that boy. Um. So anyway, I did like the Trina Jocelyn stuff, you know, them hanging out at the pool and shit. Listen, General Hospital, they are getting their money's worth out this pool set because we've been seeing this pool set every day since they debuted it. <laughs> they said, bitch, this shit cost us a lot of money to make. We're going to get some, we going to get our money's worth up out of this. I ain't mad at them. I know some people on social media are saying they kind of tired of looking at the pool set. I'm not. It looked fun to me. You know, and besides, you know, sets like that take a lot of time and money to build. It's still summertime, so they want to get their money's worth. I'm not mad at it. But Trina is a prime example of why you should stay out of grown folks' business. Here she is trying to piece together, you know, what's going on between Jordan, her mother, and Curtis. Jordan already told her that her and Curtis were getting a divorce because of, you know, miscommunications and not being honest and stuff like that. 
that's parts of the reason they're getting a divorce. She thinks that there's more to the story. She thinks that her mother and Curtis did something prior and that he may have cheated on Jordan with his mother. That's what she thinking. I'm like, see, that's why you need to stay out of grown people business because you don't even know the whole story, first of all. But I could kind of understand because she doesn't know. She has a feeling that Curtis and Portia hooked up before. That's the sense that she's getting. That's because she doesn't know about their past relationship back in the day before, you know, she was born or whatever. She don't know nothing about that. Um, So, you know, she's not going to let it go. If anything, Trina's going to keep digging into this until she figure out what's really going on. She's not going to let it go. It's basically because she's afraid that she thinks that Curtis is going to cheat on her mom. If he cheated on Jordan, she's like, oh, what's to stop him from cheating on her mom? I'm like, yeah, but you need to know all the facts first before you jump to those conclusions, Trina. I'm just saying. Um, Which brings me to Portia and Curtis. They were talking about the same thing. Because Curtis feels like they need to tell Trina about their past relationship, their past affair. Portia, on the other hand, is not here for that. Portia said, I ain't telling her nothing. She don't need to know about it. It was the past. She don't need to know. I agree with Curtis on this one. I think she should know because a lot of people know about what happened between them back in the day. And it's bound to slip out of somebody's mouth and she's bound to find out about it. And he was like, take it from me, secrets, trust. They have a way of just coming out and messing everything up. I concur. I agree with Curtis on this. I feel like Portia need to tell Trina the whole story. You know what I mean? Because if you lie to her about this and she find out later, it's just going to cause some drama between y'all. So it's like, don't do that. You know, but she's hell bent on keeping it to themselves. So I said, all right, when it blow up in your face, which it will. Um... But, of course, you know, her and Curtis are happy about setting up their first official date and stuff, which I think is cool, you know, but everything is not going to go off without a hitch. It's it's going to be a lot of drama, especially with the divorce papers not being sent off and Aunt Stella in the mix and now Trina digging into the past. It's going to be a, a hell of a roller coaster ride for this couple. I'm telling you, it's going to be a problem for Curtis and Portia. Like, it's going to be a lot of angst. It's going to be a lot of miscommunication. I'm here for all of it because I got a feeling we might get some good drama out of it. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, the gruesome, the gruesome foursome is trying to figure out how to keep everybody ass out of prison right about now because Jason is sitting there telling Elizabeth, are you sure nobody like who else knew about y'all putting that body in that freezer? She like, oh, ain't nobody else know about it. He was like, okay, but somebody could have saw y'all maybe put the body in there. She was like, don't nobody know about that basement. Nobody currently at the hospital that's recent staff know anything about that basement. She was like, the damn basement don't even come up on the floor plan. So he was like, maybe y'all made a mistake and Peter wasn't dead like y'all thought because Anna was thinking the same thing to Finn. She was like, maybe, you know, during the chaos, maybe you panicked or something and you thought he was dead, but he really wasn't. It's possible. I agree. I think when he thought Peter, you know, he didn't get a post. I think Peter was just knocked out. And, you know, Spinelli had called Jason because Jason wanted him to look at the camera uh, system and stuff to see if anybody's been down here recently or whatever. And Spinelli was like, nah, nobody been down here because Peter could have got out of the basement during the time that the camera system was down. He could have got out without anybody knowing about it, which is true. He could have. Um... So they have no way of knowing if anybody took the body or if the body or if he just got up and got out. I don't think he was dead. Just I think he was just unconscious. Like he was just knocked out. And that's why they didn't get a post from him. But I think him being in that freezer may have woke his ass up. And, you know, he came to and just found a way to get out of there because they did find, you know, when Anna and um, Finn were down there, Jordan and Dante showed up asking what they were doing down there and stuff. And, you know, they had to tell them what was kind of going on a little bit. Like, you know, Anna had to come up with a cover story and basically let them know that she traced Peter's footsteps from the roof to the basement or whatever. And Finn saw her on the roof, so he decided to tag along. So, you know, they had to come up with that cover story. Um, and that's when Dante and all them spotted the blood on the side of the freezer. And Jordan was like, shit, this is a crime scene now. So Anna had to let them know, like... 
all of our prints are all over this place because her and Finn did not wear, you know, gloves when they were in here. So their fingerprints may come up if they check for prints. I was like, that's all well and good. They have a, an excuse for their fingerprints being here. But, you know, if they check for finger, fingerprints and they find Elizabeth's prints up in here, how are they going to explain that? Because now, if they find her prints there, they're going to have to explain why Elizabeth was in that basement. And we know how Dante can be during an investigation. Dante is like a dog with a bone. He's not going to stop until he gets some type of closure and clarity about what happened down there. I was like, y'all asses are in trouble. Y'all better come up with a story. And it better be a good one. Y'all better come up with a story. Um... So, of course, Anna was telling Finn that she's, you know, trying to find out what happened to Peter and they need to find out what happened to him and that she'll try to find out information from the PCPD to let him know how the investigation is going and where the cops, you know, where they looking and stuff. Try to keep him apprised. Um, so Finn met up with Elizabeth and whatnot. So Finn and Elizabeth let each other know that, oh, Jason know everything, Anna know everything. And he told her, he was like, shit, I kept you out of it and stuff. You know, I ain't mentioning your name, but he was like, Anna know that he had some help putting that body in their freezer. Um, Jason pretty much feels like they're off the hook right now. He was like, for the time being, y'all are off the hook. Since the body's gone, They he doubts that the cops are going to be knocking on their door. I'm like, yeah, but if they find Elizabeth fingerprints up in there, she all said it's a rat for her ass. They're going to get her because they're going to question her and wonder why was a surgical nurse in a sub basement. Like what business did you have down there? So she better get a good cover story in place because, you know, Dante, if she says any anything wrong that doesn't sound convincing, he's going to know she's lying. So y'all in trouble. Y'all better figure it out, because if not, y'all going to be sitting up in there. And the new orange is the new black version of Port Charles. Y'all going to be sitting up in there with Big Sally and Big Rufus. Y'all going to be fighting them off of y'all pudding. Y'all better get it together. Get a good story. Get Scott on the phone and let him know, listen, shit got hot. We need you to talk us through this. I'm just saying, you know, you got to keep yourself out of the penitentiary. I'm just saying. But um, anyway, this was a good episode. I enjoyed this. Um, Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about it. And I will see y'all all later. Have a great day. Peace.